Welcome to session 10 of Electronic Structure Theory. This is another fairly brief session, and this is focused on the following question that you, one often gets asked when you do these kind of calculations. It's natural to ask, okay, if I want a certain accuracy in my, uh, let's say, bond lengths or bond angles or atomization energies or reaction exothermicities, what basis set and what methodology should I use? And it's easy to say, well, just use the biggest basis set and use couple cluster theory, which is probably the most accurate methodology. But often you can't do that because the couple cluster theory scales at such high uh, power to the, of the number of basis functions, you can't afford to do it for your big molecule. And you want to know what's the right compromise to get a, a given accuracy. So in session 10, what I'll be showing is some statistical data that shows the range of errors, systematic and spread in errors, that one can observe with different basis sets and different methodologies. So you can get some idea of if you're doing a calculation at the Hartree-Fock level with an augmented correlation consistent polarized double zeta basis set, what likely are the range of errors in bond lengths or bond angles or reaction energies that you could expect using that methodology? So that's what session 10 will be about. Okay, so welcome to session number 10. And in this session, which is boring, I just I need to go over a little bit of the uh, just what one can expect from the various methodologies that I've talked about so far: these molar plicit perturbation theory and configuration interaction and Hartree-Fock and couple cluster and so forth. And I just wanted to remind you that when we talked about molar plicit perturbation theory, sometimes you can get these crazy results. And these are just some plots that I showed earlier when I talked about the MPN energies and. So my point here basically is sometimes these things are not even convergent. You can get crazy, totally ridiculous results. But for the rest of this session, I mainly want to just give you some statistical information about the kinds of errors that one tends to get when you carry out calculations uh, using different basis sets and using different uh, electronic structure methodologies. So in these, on the, the, this one and the next series of uh, these slides, are, they're really quite busy. But the bottom line basically is that we, you see a vertical line, which is always some experimentally correct, as best as they can determine it, because they have their weaknesses too, value for something. And on this, tr on this slide, we're talking about the distribution of errors in bond lengths in a series of molecules that people carried out these kind of calculations on. And the molecules were about 20 fairly normal molecules. They're not very complicated. They're things like hydrogen and methane and hydrogen fluoride and water and, and ethylene and acetylene and formaldehyde. There, there, so there aren't any extremely large molecules, maybe five or six or seven atoms. And what they did is they carried out really uh, high quality, in some cases, these couple cluster calculations with large basis set these correlation consistent polarized valence quadruple zeta. And they basically try to say, okay, if we do our best over this set of 20 molecules, what is the range of errors that we make in? And in this slide, we basically have the, the bond length. So they're saying, okay, for these molecules in picometers, so I guess that would be like 10 to the minus 12 meters or 10 to the minus 10 centimeters or 10 to the minus two angstrom. So for example, and I'm not going to go th all through these, but I just want you to get some qualitative feeling here. In the first, um, I guess you would call it row, horizontally, we have Hartree-Fock results for correlation consistent polarized valence, double zeta, and in the middle triple zeta, and on the right quadruple zeta basis sets. And you can see from this basically that Hartree-Fock tends to systematically get bond lengths that are too short. People know this and have known it for years. But also the range of errors is quite high. So even as you increase the quality of the basis set, the fact that you're doing Hartree-Fock calculations still limits you. You aren't going to be able to get near the, the accuracy that you need, which is that vertical line. And then in the second row, and I don't want to go through each of these, basically you have MP2 in the second row, um, MP3, MP4. The one thing that maybe is worth noticing is there, in the next to last row we're here, we have this couple, you know, CCSD parentheses T. You know, couple cluster theory, including single and double excitations, and perturbative increasing uh, perturbation, including of the triple excitations. And I think in the the things that I'm pointing here in the next to last row, in the middle and the right, at least you can see that when you're doing couple cluster calculations, you tend to systematically get things that number one are pretty close to the 
the experimental bond lengths, and number two, the distribution of errors is quite narrow. And I think this gives you some feeling for why people like to, if they want to get really good results, they like to try to go to the CCSD parentheses T level. Uh, you can see that in MP2 and MP3, sometimes you're lucky <laughs> if you do an MP2 calculation with a triple zeta basis set, you tend to get uh, answers that are pretty good in bond lengths with but sort of widespread of errors. If you improve the basis set, sometimes you do a little bit worse even. So there's, some, there's bad news basically in, in most of what uh, I'm talking about today in this uh, session. In this slide, essentially we're looking at the same kind of information about bond angles rather than bond lengths. And I think the only thing that's useful to maybe take home from here is that sometimes you can be lucky. So if MP2 with a uh, polarized valence uh, quadruple basis set level, this up in the second row and the third column, sure, you can get uh, some decent answers there. But that's just a matter of luck. You, generally, you have to go to these couple cluster type calculations with the triple or higher level basis set to get systematically more or less on the money and with a narrow distribution of errors. Uh, there's also <laughs> errors that you can look at for atomization energies. This means take the molecule, let's say we're talking methane, and break it apart into its atoms, four, four hydrogen atoms and a carbon atom in its ground electronic state. Now, th that's a very severe thing to do. And no, no, I'm not saying that chemically you're interested in that process for any reason, but it's just a way to tabulate the total energy content of a molecule relative to its atoms. And again, you can see in, these, uh, in this tr slide here that really to get pretty accurate and narrow distribution of errors, one has to use larger basis sets. There's quadruple zeta, for example, in the middle, and couple cluster quality results. Now, one, I also talked about the basis set extrapolation methods, which maybe you've forgotten about. But you know, there's this exponential dependence of the Hartree-Fock energy on the basis set, what's called cardinal number. You know, double zeta is 2, triple zeta is 3, quadruple zeta is 4. And, and there's this way we can extrapolate to, to, in principle, infinite basis set. And what I've shown here are just in the dotted lines. Uh, for example, this upper left-hand column is we've taken a polarized uh, correlation consistent polarized valence triple zeta basis set. And there have been uh, calculations done at the couple cluster level, as indicated up there, um, on atomization energies without, that means the solid line, and with the dashed line basis set extrapolation. So you can see that when you go and extrapolate the basis set to complete basis set limit, which are the dotted lines in all cases, you, you do tend to improve. In this case, it's the atomization energy. But other properties also include uh, improve, that is bond lengths and bond angles. You also can look at reaction energy. So there's a family of, I think, about 20 or 30 chemical reactions that the people who carried out this statistical analysis did. And you can look at reaction energies. And again, the, the lesson is basically boring, but it's more or less the same thing that Hartree-Fock tends to give a very wide range of errors, you know, up to, you can see here, like 80 kilojoules. That would be, say, 20 kilocalories per mole. Yeah, that's about right. Uh, so that's fairly large errors. If you want to get much more accurate numbers you, in these sharp spikes, you tend to say, well, where is that? That's down in the couple cluster level. So the unfortunate truth is you usually have to do couple cluster level treatment if you want real high accuracy. And this, trend, this slide here basically shows the same kind of information that I talked about before, that if you do the complete basis set extrapolation, which is the dotted lines in each case, you tend to improve the quality of, in this case, it's reaction enthalpies. So that was the end of that little guide.